In this video you will learn in just 8 minutes to use the Mahler diagram of the RON 134A refrigerant gas used in refrigeration and air conditioning applications and we are also going to review some important particularities of this refrigerant. Let's start looking for the evaporator pressure which must have a value based on the equipment's working temperature. For example, for a freezing application with an evaporator at minus 20 degrees Celsius, typical of refrigerator type systems, according to the Mahler diagram, there is an absolute pressure of 1.3 bars. To find the pressure that the manometer should read, we must subtract the atmospheric pressure from the absolute pressure of the diagram. In this way, by subtracting 1.3 bars, minus 1 bar from the atmospheric pressure, we have a manometer pressure of 0.3 bars. The blue or low pressure gauge should read 0.3 bars or the equivalent of 4.1 psi. For example, for a refrigeration application at minus 10 degrees Celsius, according to the Mahler diagram, there is an absolute pressure of 2 bars. To find the pressure that the blue or low manometer should mark, we must subtract atmospheric pressure from the absolute pressure. In this way, by subtracting 2 bars minus 1 bar from the atmospheric pressure, we have a manometer pressure of 1 bar. The low or blue pressure gauge should read 1 bar or 14.7 psi. This point represents the outlet of the evaporator, when there is no overheating of the refrigerant. But when there is an overheat of for example 10 degrees, then the evaporator outlet point moves to the right. It moves to the right, because by adding the minus 10 degrees of the evaporator, plus the 10 degrees of superheat, a temperature of zero degrees is reached. Remember that superheating is the increase in temperature of the refrigerant in the evaporator. Now to find the condenser pressure of the system, it is required to know the temperature of the outside environment and add 15 degrees to this value. Thus, for example, for an external environment temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, adding the 15 degrees mentioned, there is a condensation temperature of 40 degrees. In the Mahler diagram, for this temperature value there is an absolute pressure of 10 bars. To find the pressure that the manometer should read, we must subtract the atmospheric pressure from the absolute pressure. In this way, by subtracting 10 bars minus 1 bar from the atmospheric pressure, we have a manometer pressure of 9 bars. Then the high or red pressure gauge should read 9 bars or 132.3 psi. This point is the inlet of the refrigerant to the compressor when the superheat is 10 degrees. These lines are isentropic lines and represent the work of the compressor. This is the point that represents the entry of the refrigerant to the compressor. This point is the outlet of the refrigerant from the compressor and inlet to the condenser. This point represents the refrigerant leaving the condenser with zero subcooling. When the subcooling is 10 degrees, then this is the output, because 40 degrees minus 10 degrees of subcooling is 30 degrees, so the point is shifted to the left. Remember that subcooling is the loss of temperature once the refrigerant is in a liquid state. This is the entrance to the capillary. This is the outlet of the capillary, which is also the inlet to the evaporator. Let's find the temperature of the refrigerant at the compressor outlet, which we can find at this point. This value represents the energy that the refrigerant has at the inlet of the evaporator. This point the energy of the refrigerant to the exit of the evaporator or entrance of the compressor. This point is the energy value at the compressor outlet. The performance of this cycle can be calculated as follows. In the diagram we can see the phases of the refrigerant within the refrigeration cycle. Zone where the refrigerant is in only liquid phase. Zone where the refrigerant is in liquid and vapor phase at the same time. Zone where the refrigerant is in only vapor phase. Now we are going to talk about the substitutes for RON 134A. Let's remember that although RON 134A does not damage the ozone layer, it does have a global warming power of 1430, which was not a problem before. The new ecological restrictions mean that the use of RON 134A begins to have problems in some parts of the world. In this video, we are going to talk about R513A as a substitute for RON 134A in refrigeration and freezing equipment. And we will study R1234YF as a substitute for RON 134A in new car air conditioning system. Let's start by saying that R513A refrigerant is currently considered as an alternative for the replacement of RON 134A in new and existing equipment. 1. R513A refrigerant is a mixture of RON 134A refrigerant at 44% plus R1234YF refrigerant at 56%. 2. R513A refrigerant is a low GWP, non-flammable, alternative refrigerant belonging to the A1, lone group, 
which allows equipment manufacturers to comply with future HFC regulations. 3. R513A refrigerant has a GWP of 629, but has a weak point with slightly lower efficiency than RON 134A. Or, R513A refrigerant has a drop-in, direct replacement for RON 134A in existing commercial and industrial refrigeration equipment, high and medium temperature, positive displacement and direct expansion. 5. In addition, R513A refrigerant is presented as an excellent alternative in systems with centrifugal and screw compressors. 6. All Dampos TurboCore Series compressors, produced from December 2017, are compatible with RON 134A and R513A. 7. R513A refrigerant is an azeotropic blend, non-slip. 8. By providing efficient RON 134A equipment that is future compatible with R513A, the long-term investment customers make in their equipment is protected. 9. We are going to study the refrigerant R1234YF. Let's start by saying that R1234YF refrigerant gas is an HFO refrigerant, which replaces RON 134A in air conditioning equipment of new car models. 1. Like all HFO refrigerants, R1234YF is non-ozone depleting and has a low GWP of only 4. 2. R1234YF refrigerant has high thermal and chemical stability, low toxicity and is slightly flammable, as well as excellent compatibility with most materials. 3. The safety classification of R1234YF refrigerant as 2L. 4. R1234YF refrigerant is miscible with PO polyester synthetic oils and PAG polyalkylene glycols, so it should always be used with this type of oil. 5. It is important to mention that R1234YF refrigerant is also used in water chillers, chillers, in the industrial and commercial sectors. 6. As of January 1, 2018, in many areas it is mandatory for vehicle manufacturers to use R1234YF in automotive air conditioning systems. 7. The law requires the use of a refrigerant with a GWP less than 150 in automotive air conditioning systems. Currently R1234YF is the best alternative.